What's going on everybody? It's McFly here back with another Modern Warfare 2 video. So I've been playing around a little bit on controller. Uh, I haven't played con actual like controller besides Warzone on a, on a Call of Duty game since probably 2019. But I got back to it here and I wanted to play around with the control to see what was comfortable for me. We're going to be talking about controller settings today. Now that I've got a little bit of experience under my belt with controller in this game. Like I said in the last video, a lot of this is kind of what feels good to you. So I'm going to give you some of the, you know, stick sensitivity and ADS sensitivity multiplier settings that I use, but you got to tweak it towards what feels comfortable to you. And I think a lot of people ask, what do you mean by feels comfortable? When you're turning and you're able to turn and aim on a dime or aim pretty much where you want to aim without thinking about it. That's how you know that you're comfortable with where the controls are. So bear that in mind. But these are the settings that I've been using and I've actually I'm going to put up some of my gameplay for this intro while I'm talking here. You can kind of see my movement and stuff. Um, I do feel that controller is a lot better for close range battle because of aim assist. They did do some tweaking to it. Um, but like I said, close range controller is much better. And I think for quick movement, I do think controller is a lot better, better and easier to do the quick movements and become a movement king is a lot easier on controller, in my opinion. Anyway, so let's get into the settings that I use. What you're going to want to do and click the start menu and go into controller settings. Make sure that this aim input, aiming input device is set to controller. The first thing that I want to do, it, so I don't know if you guys have paddles. I personally have paddles, but I only have two paddles. So I kind of do a mixture of what you should do if you have paddles and what you should do if you don't. So let's first thing go into edit button layout here. And I set my button layout preset to stick and move. So what that does is essentially if you're on an Xbox controller, it changes the right stick and, and the A, it switches those. So instead of the right stick being mount and melee, it is now jump and A is now melee and mount. So you think that's not that big of a change, but it's easier to jump while aiming now as opposed to having to move your fingers. So that's the first thing I would do. Again, there's a bunch of different ones here. I know a lot of peop people uh, use tactical which is fine. There's a whole bunch of different ones you can do. So I personally use stick and move. Uh, everything else should be left default. I turn off controller vibration. Just it's a preference. You can leave it on if you would like. There's really no difference here. I do know that the vibrate sometimes can catch me off guard and make it a little bit, my reaction time a little bit slower. So that's a preference here. So the horizontal stick and the vertical stick sensitivity I have set to six. Uh, I prefer six. And I'm going to get into why I have set this to, I tried doing this at four with my ADS sensitivity multiplier at 0.8, at one, at 0.9. Um, and this is where I feel the most comfortable. I feel like at six, you have enough movement and, and uh, horizontal and vertical on the right stick to where it's not so much that you're having to overcompensate, but it's also not so little that uh, you, you don't have a fast enough movement. So that's kind of my sweet spot. I would suggest doing six i wouldn't go anything over seven or eight i know a lot of people my friend included does all the way up and does 20. i don't know how you can aim but he does well with that so again it's preference but i think right around in this four to seven range is is probably where you want to be for both horizontal and vertical now if you leave this ads sensitivity multiplier at one you'll notice that your aim is going to be a lot quicker than you might want it to be again this is all relative but i prefer this to move this down to 0.9 that way it kind of matches your your movement with without aiming and with aiming down sights. All of these can be left at one. Let's talk about the aim assist. Aim assist in this game has a little bit of a tweak. Um, they have all of the same three aim assist types that they had before. They have default, precision, and focusing. For those of you who are know about that, you can skip to the timestamp to where I talk about the Black Ops aim assist type. For those of you who don't know, it's pretty straightforward. Default is just the default aim assist. It does a normal aim slowdown near targets. Precision is if you're a little bit better of a accurate aimer on controller, it has strong aim slowdown, but it only kicks in when the enemy is closer. So at further ranges, it's, gonna, it's not gonna lock on as much. Focusing is for those of you who are new to the controller or just aren't great at aiming. The slowdown kicks in at longer ranges. So for those of you who are kind of better at aiming, a lot of you will not like that because when you're trying to move around, it forces you to stay on target. So that's kind of where you want to figure out, you know, if you want to do precision or focusing, that's up to you. I would try all of these out and see what you like. 
Now, Black Ops here, it says it's the traditional use in Black Ops game, but what I found is between focusing and Black Ops, there's not a huge difference, but there is about a one to 2% difference in how strong the aim assist is as well as how easy it is to get off of the aim assist. A lot of people saying this is overpowered. I would disagree with that, but I do think that this takes to the focusing and precision and puts them into one and makes it kind of the ideal aim assist type, at least for me. So that's what I put it on. I would suggest you do the same. For the aim response curve type, you have standard, you have linear and dynamic. This is a whole, literally a graphical representation of how the aim, aim response works. Um, I prefer dynamic. I feel that it's less of a force of aim assist while also still being pretty accurate. So I choose dynamic aim sensitivity multiplier. Again, set this to 0.9. That's where I have mine at. Everything else can pretty much be left at default. Your input dead zones here. Um, what you'll have to do is get into a game. Essentially what these input dead zones are is once you move the analog sticks left and right, it's when you let go. If it's still moving, that means you have the dead zone too low and you need to move it up until you are no longer having stick drift. And you, again, you'll have to play around with this. Set the sensitivity of your left and right triggers, which is cool. I have the, all of this to default. I haven't really played around with it because where I ha where at default has been working for me. But again, you can change all of that. So movement behaviors, keep auto move forward off. Tactical sprint, you want single tap run, which is essentially tactical sprint. And then automatic airborne mantle, you want it to be partial. Automatic ground mantle off. Any of these mantles, honestly, you could probably turn off. I have partial on just because it's been working for me, but I'll always have these off because the game will force you to mantle when you don't want to otherwise you can set this to standard you do not want to have it inverted and then parachute auto deploy is off ads stick swap off backpack all so all of this stuff is pretty much default here so i left all of that default that's for all of you who do not have paddles so for those of you who have two paddles what i really honestly would suggest is to since we have now figured out how to slide cancel and you can see that in my previous video i'm putting the link to that up here and in the description but really what you want to make sure is that your right panel is to slide and your left paddle is to change weapons so i showed it in that video but essentially right you want to be able to do a slide double weapon change to be able to cancel your slide so i would suggest at the very least using those two paddles and setting them that way. If you have four, you can use the other two however you please. I would say probably you wanna use one for jumping and the other one for melee. Uh, but you can set that however you would like. So that's that's the settings that I would use and that I am comfortable with controller settings wise for Modern Warfare 2. If you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment below. There were a lot of questions and comments on my last video regarding the NVIDIA filters. I know that there's been a lot of issues with the NVIDIA filters right now, so bear that in mind when you watch that video. Um, I do appreciate all of your guys' support. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for more Modern Warfare 2 videos, and please do remember that good vibes are contagious.